Hi, thanks for joining me. Uh, today my guest is Pat Moore, local artist. Really good too. Pat, you are so talented. And your mother was an artist yes. as well too, so is that where your talent comes from? Well, I, I guess it was, but she really didn't start painting until she was uh, later in life. And actually, up till you know, a couple of years ago, my main focus was on nursing. I loved to nurse. And uh, we moved here from Saskatchewan in, in 1970. And uh, uh, we came here because of work. Uh, at that time, the economy in Saskatchewan had really gone gone downhill. And my husband was a mechanic, so he, uh, he knew somebody out here and said, oh, you really have to move from Saskatchewan. To, to Fernie, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're in the mountains and, you know, coming, coming from a flat land, but uh, anyhow, uh, we, um, we decided to move and we'd only been married a couple of years by then and uh, I was trying to get a job uh, even in Kipling, we were moved from Kipling, Saskatchewan, and uh, I couldn't get a job in a small hospital, uh, which, you know, nowadays, nurses they're looking for nurses and you, they can't find them but now you know we came then and so I got on working right right away and that's when I don't know if you remember Rose Miller was the oh, yeah. director of nursing definitely at, remember at Rose Ro so you were in the old hospital in the old hospital well, the where the park place was yeah where the now. park place is yeah. because yeah. I remember Rose very mm -hmm. very well yeah, yeah. and uh, Worked with people like Mary Duthie, I don't know if you remember oh, yeah. Mary Duthie, and uh, uh, Hilda Hunt was, was yeah. another one of the nurses that I worked with. And uh, yeah, I worked uh, there, and then of course when they built the new hospital here, then I was employed there as well. That's really interesting that you brought that up, because that hospital was built, I think, in the early 40s. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was uh, built in 1942. And um, you know so much history mm -hmm. of that hospital. Yeah. So much history. When you think of all the people, my four children were born there. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you have your son when you came? Yeah, our son was born in Kipling in oh, Saskatchewan. Okay. Yeah, and then I uh, had another son, but uh, who had passed away from heart heart problems. He was he was born in this hospital. Ah. Uh, here. I don't recall that. Yeah, Doctor Doctor Ewart was our doctor. Yeah, yeah. I remember Doctor Ewart well because he mm -hmm. was our family doctor as well. He and mm -hmm. his wife Sheila, who, were, who was yeah. also a doctor, and uh, he was born in the old in the old hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, as I said, that hospital had so many memories and so much history. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of all the Ferny people, my mother passed away in that hospital, and my four yeah. children were born there. So yes, I actually they... remember that. I, I think Do you? I was working around that time. Oh, were you? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The doctors that were there are no uh, longer with us. No, <laughs> Doctor McRitchie, yeah. Doctor East. <laughs> yeah, Doctor um, yeah. uh, Fami, Doctor Fami, Doctor Fami. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Moore. Yeah. Oh, Doctor Moore wasn't in that old hospital. Uh, there was a red-headed doctor, was that him? Yeah, he was red-headed, yeah. But I don't think he came till we had the new hospital. Well, I remember Because he him. replaced, well, when you were at kind of... He was in okay. the same clinic as you were at Dr. LaRue Clinic. Yeah, I worked with Dr. LaRue. Hmm. I remember also uh, Dr. Yurt having uh, his office in the uh, Quatrain block. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the history part of Fernie. You know, it's, you remember all those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you find so different moving from the prairies to Fernie? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't was know. it a big change for you? Well, sure, it was a big change because uh, we actually moved. Uh, we uh, bought a trailer and lived in the trailer court for a couple of years before we bought our land out outside of Fernie there on uh, Van Lerberg Road where we mm -hmm. live, live now. <laughs> yeah. so well, what was the impression that you had of Fernie? A uh, small town, which I was really happy because, you know, I'd, I'd never wanted to live in a big city, you know, because we, 
when you train, like you trained in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, which is, it was a city at that time, but it was an older person's uh, town. Mm -hmm. but, uh, moving to Fernery, Fernie, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was, it was great. Oh, so you weren't disappointed? No, <laughs> not disappointed. I always wanted to live in BC, and we always thought, you know, Fernie was was not going to be our our uh, place that we're, we were going to stay. We thought, you know, we'd eventually like to live, you know, in the interior over by Kelowna and that, and that's where my son actually lives there now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we get to go over there, but yeah. uh, we still live in Fernie. Did you ever think of try? Want, have you ever wanted to make that move? Yeah, your son yeah a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. when I, when we were thinking of retiring, yeah, we we thought we would go over there, but uh, no, we never. It's hard to leave Fernie, you know, because uh, you get involved. Like I've been involved with several different groups, like hospice and mm -hmm. the Elk Valley Hospital Foundation. Yeah. And it was uh, kind of a big thing that I really, you know, supported and was a volunteer for for them for many years and. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you do all the arts, and, and mm -hmm. which you have things in And that's the art when, I, when I retired, I kind of focused on, on art, and I just started, oh, just started uh, decorative painting, they call it, like, sort of like a toll painting, and I, and my mom at that time was starting her, uh, was, was doing art, and she says, oh, don't wait till you're older to, to do art. If you're going to do it, you, you start younger. <laughs> so you mean you had any experience before you started? No. In fact, in school, <laughs> they told me I should never pursue art. And you know, some teachers are not all that great. <laughs> they, no kidding. Oh, you should not pursue art, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm constantly amazed at the way some teachers, because some are really good, yeah, but some <laughs> just uh, yeah. make, make statements yeah. that, you know, they really have no basis yeah. in truth. Yeah, and then um, well, Patrick and uh, Joanne were instigators of, you know, the Fernie Arts Co-op, mm -hmm. and uh, got me to join that, and uh, I I quite enjoy it. I'm still part of the Arts Co-op and love it, and got my mom when she moved here to come into the co-op too. So how old was your mother when she started then? Because she, uh, she was painting right up until 70. her nineties. Yeah. So she, she was, was seventy. She was 70. So she painted for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because how old was she when she passed? She was 95. So yeah. 25 years. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And she was good. Oh, I know. I recall going into the co-op looking for a painting that I thought would be suitable to put in the hospice room mm -hmm. in memory of my dad who had spent a couple of weeks in there. and. And I looked at this painting of a woman with a child looking out into the ocean and the colors were so beautiful and soft and, and I thought, that is such a restful painting. If I was in hospice lying in the bed, I'd like to look at that. It's lovely and warm and, and you know, made you think of family and just and looking into the future because you know you're going somewhere else. Yeah. And, so I bought it and put a little tiny plaque on it, and then found out I don't know how long afterwards found out that was your mother. Yeah, it was yeah. early. Um, yeah, it was all it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad they haven't taken it out. Yeah, she certainly was a uh, a role model as as far as art goes, and you know I couldn't believe every time we go to visit them because they lived in the Okanagan. Oh, my dad my mom and dad and uh, she was painting all the time and every time we'd go there was something a new painting that she had just done and I just thought oh this is amazing maybe I should take up painting. It's very creative right yeah. because it's not just the ability to paint but yeah. also the creativity of mm -hmm. thinking of what you're going to what you're going to paint but because we're going to talk about Fernie um, what do you find has changed so much since she moved here. Well, all the people now, and uh, uh, during the winter, the population increases <laughs> dramatically, and uh, yeah, so everything's gotten busier. Downtown's gotten busier. The hospital's gotten busier. Ski Hill's gotten busier. You know, so you kind of pick your times as to when you're going to go shopping, when you're going to go skiing, what you're going to do. 
-hmm. And summer is really busy too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I and that's great. Yeah. I, I like it busy. And it's gotten to be a younger person's town, you know. That's quite interesting because mm -hmm. you know I've talked to quite a few people our age and older, and that's what everybody says. Mm -hmm. And in actuality, uh, a study was done about uh, four years ago, three four years ago, by the city, uh, uh, commissioned by the city, and it showed that the biggest demographic was the. 35 to 45 year age group. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, lots of kids now. Well, yeah. Last night there's the the train in town, and I couldn't believe the young couples with all their kids. Yes. They, they brought them all down and yeah. all participation of that. Yeah. And and that's true. So you were thinking that in the 70s it was more an older crowd. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Totally. Because in the 70s, you would have been as young as the people that are here now. Yeah, I know. I know. And there wasn't a big group. No, there no. wasn't actually. Just older people, and yeah. we had a lot of older friends. And some of them have, have already passed. <laughs> you know. uh, funny, because this is the first time I've talked to somebody about that. Because all my best friends were all old people my mother's age. Mm -hmm. I've always loved senior people, I've yeah. always loved being with the older people. Yeah. And so this is what I find interesting with the younger people today, is that they don't seem to have that affinity to want to be around older people. Mm -hmm. It's like they just want to be around their own age group. Yeah. And I think they're missing out so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Do you like the fact that we have more shops. Yes, I do. Because, you know, some of the people didn't. But you know what I found? That mm -hmm. the people that were complaining about the box stores weren't the Fernie people that had been born and raised in Fernie. It was mostly some of the, the wealthy people that came to Fernie because they loved the uniqueness and quaintness yeah. of the small town, but yet um, wanted to change it, but yet didn't want it to grow. Mm -hmm. And I remember having a conversation with some of those people and saying to them, listen, we like the fast food stores. We like it because being raised in Fernie where we had nothing, yeah. that was, this is really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I, I like that. Yeah. Would you change anything? What, what would you like to see in Fernie? Hmm. Well, I, I would like to see it continue to grow, you know, just, uh, you know, different, more, more shops, more local shops, you know, but I don't know that, you know, somebody has to have the money to put money into something like that, you know. Um, did your husband have a business? Yeah, he had the Shell service station. At one point, yeah. Okay, because I, I, you know, so he was part of the history in Fernie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they had the Shell. Him and Joe Craig had the, the Shell service station. I had forgotten that. Yeah. Uh, what location? It was uh, right across from uh, Park Place Lodge. The Shell was right there. Right where yeah. Integra is it Integra? Yeah, Integra Trier yeah. Trier's there, right? right next to yeah. the yeah. hotel that's and there. And then now. he worked at the. Uh, Esso, which Fred Rufiange had, and um, it's now what Vasquez. is that? Vasquez, yeah. yeah. And they tore it down. He worked built. there, yeah, yeah, yeah. He worked there for a number of years. So. And he's retired now as well. Oh yeah, he had. He used to retire before I did, but yeah. And he actually worked at the Ford Garage, which is where the Save on Foods is. Yeah, I he worked there. He so came, still there he came when you came. to uh, Wally Runyon's uh, yeah. home dock. Yeah. yeah, Wally. Yeah, and then they had the shell. It was Joe and Wally had the shell, and then uh, Wally was retiring, so um, Donnie got in with uh, Joe Craig. Yeah, we had um, several stations back in the day, mm -hmm. more than we have now. Yeah. Isn't it funny? The town was smaller. We had more service stations. We had more, more uh, bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
They're redoing the Fernie right now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's never been done. Before. Yeah. When you first moved, um, did you find work right away then at oh, the yeah. hospital? I worked at the hospital. Yeah. So, with Rose now. Yeah. So what was the difference? Because then in 74, the new hospital was built. Mm -hmm. What did you find different, you know, from the work, the way work was being conducted to the new hospital, for instance? Well, because the new hospital was... <laughs> was flat in the old hospital was stairs like so three, they three had the emergency downstairs which you were the only nurse that worked down there with the with the doctor and then upstairs was the the main floor and then one more floor was the maternity yeah third floor there was, was no the elevator maternity. was there was there an elevator there was an elevator but it wasn't used very often no we used I remember the stairs just all going the time stairs we were always running up and down the stairs yeah yeah yeah, yeah i remember that all yeah. the stairs so in the you know in the new hospital then they had two was it three wings I think yeah. and uh, it was all flat. Mm -hmm. oh. So we're going to take a little break. Okay. I'm really interested in the hospital uh, part. Were you well as a nurse maybe you weren't involved with the coalition? I would imagine it wouldn't have been very good for. A staff person. No, <laughs> but you no. must remember all of those yeah, times. Yeah, I remember that going on. But mm -hmm. Not a lot, a lot about it because when you're not a part of it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, how did it I affect? How did the changes affect the service delivery? Do you remember? No, I don't. Okay. Because I remember being, you know, uh, involved mm -hmm. with. Uh, organizing demonstrations and you know to keep the operating room and but I wasn't involved within the hospital so I wasn't quite sure exactly what they were taking away except for the operating room but they did reduce the beds dramatically yeah they did yeah and they well and then Sparwood actually lost their beds all together yeah. you know and they th said eventually Fernie was going to be like that but we didn't think it would be because Cranbrook was already really busy but then they did a huge uh, add-on in Cranbrook and uh, but we were able to keep our our surgeon and Dr. Nally was a big part like he oh, was he yeah. was really fighting strongly for that. If it wasn't coalition. for him they would have shut it down. I think so. Because they they had planned on on doing just that. Yeah yeah I know but they did. The fact that, that was the one of people <laughs> were so adamant that it's yeah. not going to happen and really if you think about it here we are, five mines, ski hill, all kinds of outdoor activities, mm -hmm. and you shut this hospital down. I mean, truly. Mm -hmm. I do recall um, lobbying and working towards getting a, a dialysis unit and wanting it in the Fernie Hospital. But when they finally said okay, and it took a lot of lobbying, different, different uh, people. But when, when interior, well, it wasn't Interior Health then it was the government, it was Brita Walsh, when she said yes that they would do it, yep. then they decided to do it in the Sparwood Hospital. And I was so disappointed, but then I was told, look, that's going to help keep that place open. Exactly. So I said, oh, okay, that's yeah. fine. No, I, I was so glad that I uh, worked towards that. Yeah. I did it yeah. because I wanted my daughter to use it, but yeah. she never did get to use it. But it didn't matter because yeah. she got a kidney, so exactly. that was better. Yeah. But so many people abused mm -hmm. it. So yeah. many people that I know. Yeah. No, they fought really hard to to and Doctor, like I say, Doctor Nelly really helped with that, and and the coalition. I know that oh, really helped. If it wasn't for Doctor yeah. Nelly, it truly would have. It would have been gone. Yeah. But he was so tenacious. Oh, I know. You know, <laughs> yeah. and he didn't care. Yeah, he no. just. I mean, he really amazing, amazing yeah. doctor. And yeah. I think all of the doctors actually were very supportive, but he is the surgeon. Yeah. Really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now he's retired. So yeah. And um, his wife said, uh, and I were talking just last month, and I said, and how is Dr. Nelly? And she goes, call him. No longer doctor. Yeah. He doesn't even want to think about it. <laughs> yeah. He's retired yeah. and he's enjoying it. Yeah. I said, yeah, but doctor is always a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were so lucky to have him. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm.
So we still have surgery going on in our hospital, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, they do bring some surgeons in every now and then, I hear. I'm not sure about that, but you, yeah, I don't know that. Well, you didn't retire that long ago because three I'm, years ago. Is it three? It's been three years. Yeah. Oh, because you retired once and then you went back. No, I retired three times. What? <laughs> and three they were times? just talking to me the other day and they said, oh, Pat, do you want to come back to work? And I said, well, I no longer have the license. Like, you have to have a license to work. <laughs> you retired three times? I retired three times and that was the last, last one. Yeah. And so you missed it? Did you miss the work? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I and obviously they I missed you because they want to keep calling you back. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No. I really liked what I did. But now I, I say I'm focusing on my art, and that's what I do now. Well, obviously you like being around people and taking care of them. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because otherwise, I mean, it's pretty tough work. Yeah, because when we moved my mom here, well, she was pretty needy. She would have had to be in Rocky Mountain Village if, you know, if I wasn't there to help. Like mm -hmm. My husband and I, like Donnie, helped big time with, with her too. Yeah, I really missed her um, at Trinity Lodge mm -hmm. after she passed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she was so lovely. She loved, she loved Fernie. Was, she could see why we moved here and why mm -hmm. we didn't ever want to move. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Well, in a small town, you can, as you said before, you can have a really full, rich life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get involved with a lot of things without it yeah. being, um, you know, difficult, like, yeah. you know, my daughters who live in Calgary have to drive hours to get yeah. to do some of the things they do here, you know, what is it, five minutes? Yeah, we do at our back door what people drive from miles and miles to do, yeah. Yeah, it's really amazing. And the community, it just loves, you know, for people to say, oh, there's nothing to do in Fernie, oh, then they haven't gone out their door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I know do. you're a golfer. Mm -hmm. Are you a skier as well? Yeah, a skier. And I know you do lots of hiking and climbing mountains because yeah. I see those and photos and, <laughs> and the biking. Yeah. What don't you do, Pat? Uh, curling. Hmm. <coughs> and curling apparently is growing in Fernie. Oh, so, it has yeah. grown. It's but I just don't want to do one more thing, like you know, because <laughs> there's always a learning curve. You know, I go to the gym regularly, and I, uh, in fact, I went to yoga this morning. Like you know, I do yoga. And, Keep myself You healthy. get very active. Yeah. You do lots. Yeah. What, what is the, the most, uh, of all these things that you do, what do you enjoy the most? What do I enjoy the most? Yeah. Golfing. Golfing? Yeah. I do five, five times a week at least. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. And that's, and that's you know, because you're at least four, five hours golfing. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you're, we just stopped and into the restaurant. That's why you're in there. such yeah. good shape. You're doing all these exercise <laughs> things. I know, <laughs> but I always have. You mm -hmm. know, it's nothing new for me. So, yeah. if you hadn't gone into nursing, what do you think you would have done? I don't know. My mother wanted me to be a secretary. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Well, in our, uh, you know, at our in our day when we were younger, and you go into high school, it was like a nurse, a teacher. Yeah. Or a secretary, yeah. or working in an office yeah. somewhere. And I wanted to be a nurse. Oh, so right. in, yes, yeah. in Fernie, they, would, they had two curriculums. One they called the academic one, so that you would go away to school after grade 12. Mm -hmm. Or you took the business one. Yeah. And so, because I wanted to be a nurse, I did the academic one. Yeah. But as it turned out, um, my father, my father was very old-fashioned and he thought, oh, you know, you should just get married. And by that time, actually, I had met Nick, so I decided yeah. that I would get married. So I had no real skills, but they had night school, so I went and took some business courses. They had the oh, college. Yeah. Yeah. They had the college above uh, IGS, which oh, used yeah, to be. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And so I went and learned the business stuff over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I was sorry I never got to be a nurse, but yeah. oh well. It was, well, one of my teachers actually thought I should be a teacher, and, you know, maybe that's what I what pursued, but I don't know, ever since I was a little girl I always wanted to be a nurse. I guess, you know, just always wanted to be help people. Yeah. That's how I felt too, yeah. and so I've been doing it in different ways. Yeah.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Everybody has has their way of doing things. <laughs> yeah. When you first um, moved to Fernie, what did you start doing immediately besides working? What did you join right away? What? Well, I had a son that you know, like a you know little one to look after. Oh, for so, okay. Yeah. So yeah, weren't as busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so no, I didn't. I didn't do half the exercises and stuff that I do now. You know, because really wasn't time. You know, and there wasn't as much. To and then, do uh, well, back when we had either. Curtis too. He was he was sick when he was he was young, and I spent six months out of one year down in Vancouver with him and sick children. So, uh, uh, how old was he when he passed? He was. He would have been two. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, he had pretty heartbreaking. He had, uh, yeah. He had heart problems and lung problems, actually. Yeah. He was born like with that. But, mm -hmm. yeah. And nowadays, they would, would have done a heart-lung transplant, and he would yeah. have survived. But. Yeah, it's definitely things have progressed in many mm -hmm. ways. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, they do them on infants now. Mm -hmm. so. They even do it <laughs> while they're in uterus. Yes. I, I watched that on television yeah. and I thought, holy, wow, that is miraculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wish they would start growing parts like kidneys and hearts so that yeah. everybody that needs it can have it. Because, yeah. you know, it's just so difficult unless you've been in that experience and where you're waiting, waiting, waiting. Mm -hmm. it, it's tough. Yeah. I'm trying to think of uh, of something that um, you know the way Fernie was in '72 as to how it is now. Can you think of the way Fernie looked in '72 and com make that comparison as to how it is now? Well, it's much bigger, more, more. Uh a lot more houses and a lot more areas developed, like, you know, there was no such thing as Parkland Terrace or, you know. Or Ridgemont. Or Ridgemont or, yeah, now there's Montaigne, like it's yeah. totally expanded. Sears, <laughs> Castle Mountain, yeah. yeah. Coquito, Coquito, yeah. and yeah, it's expanded all over the ski hill, yeah. Yeah, we, Fernie's really changed. Mm -hmm. and, and even out our way, there's, whole big development going in over, over there, mm -hmm. you know. So. On the other side with Riverside, is that what you're talking about? Uh, but Stanford, there's mm -hmm. a whole big area yeah, there. Yeah, that's the Riverside. Developing yeah. A whole bunch of housing supposed to go in there, like they said, five phases. Yeah. Well, at one time when that, um, that whole area was developed, there was supposed to be 425 units. Mm -hmm. Of course, that many never did materialize, but now they're starting to work towards it again. Yeah. And yeah, Fernie's got enough area mm -hmm. already developed and ready to go that is good enough for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And it's actually expanding over by Buck Jones there. Some of the yes. lots have, have yeah. sold there too. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be even further home. down the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, at one, I'm sure it's at some point the ski hill will become part of Fernie. Yeah, so when we came, it was like downtown Fernie, then there was the annex and West Fernie. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing it's else. True. No tributaries. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the stores that were there in the 70s? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, the quail, the quails mm -hmm. uh, stuff. There was, uh, what was that little MC Cash grocery store? Yeah. There was, I don't know. All that whole block there was a bunch of little stores. Um, Nacaratos had a store there. Jan Nacarato had. Oh, she did what too. What's that called? It is now where the hemp store is. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. 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 I think it was called BJ. The BJ shop. I forgot. Yes. That. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then across the store was the Cook's uh, Pharmacy, wasn't it? Golly, I'd forgotten. Or Mitten was Cook? Mitten Cook? Yeah, yeah, that's right, on the, on the corner. Mm -hmm. 
Cappuccino Corner on the corner, <laughs> um, where yeah. Big Bang Mayo was. Yeah, was. and not before that, yeah. it was, was it still the um, butcher shop? Mafioli's yeah, butcher Mafioli's shop? butcher shop before mm -hmm. that, yeah. And across the road, I think that's where the clinic was for Dr. East and Dr. McCritchie and Dr. Baird. Really? Mm -hmm. And then it became the Scotia Bank. And then it became a whole lot of other things. Yeah, it was Scotia. Boy, if those buildings yeah, could talk, hey? Yeah. The history, <laughs> the, the stories they could tell us. For sure. And then the hydro building on the corner where the museum is now. Yeah, and that started out as the home bank. It has, oh, oh yeah, it has walls this thick because it was the bank. It was the home bank. Mm -hmm. And it kind of went uh, bankrupt. Yeah. So um, it ended up being BC Hydro. Mm -hmm. Need a little break? Because um, I'm interested in, you know, experiences from, say, the 70s and 80s, are there, is there anything that stands out in your mind as far as your work or your enjoyment time that sticks in your mind? Experiences? Well, it's always, life is an experience, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing that really, you know, pops out, but I uh, really enjoyed my work life and I uh, really enjoyed the community. And the more I got involved with volunteering, I found that was a, a part that I really liked to do too, was, you know, trying to help out and trying to keep our services in the valley and stuff like that. And I thought, wow, you know, uh, from small towns, like even like Dr. Rowan used to say, you know, she came from a small community and she says, lots of times you have to help out and you have to volunteer and, and that's what small communities, that's how they're built and that's how they're kept. And really, if you look at everything, you, if you look search and rescue, mm -hmm. you know, volunteers. Exactly. And isn't that amazing that yeah. something like that should be a volunteer? when it's such important work. Look it at the lives they save. They do. You know, and we've got groups in the entire valley from Elkford, Sparwood and yeah. Fernie, and they're there. They, you know, they leave their yeah. families. They go into dangerous situations. Yeah. I have such admiration for search and rescue. I do too. I do They're too. just amazing. Yeah. Um, even mm -hmm. ambulance services, oh, you know, all, me yeah. all medical pe people in, the f in that field Mm -hmm. For me, are just yeah. tremendous. Yeah, like my husband said when he used to have to go out and on a wreck or to you know where there's been an accident and stuff like that, and they, you know, they have to deal with you know, trying to make sure that the, you know, the area is safe for them as well as you know, trying to save somebody's life as mm -hmm. you know, at least if they've been in an accident and then the ambulance has come and and some of them they have pretty high stress jobs and they're you know they you know, something simple that they may have to do, but that has saved that person's life, you know, because they were there and they, mm -hmm. had, the, they had the expertise of what to do in that situation. Well, I would think that even for somebody like your husband who had to go there and, and pick up, mm -hmm. the, you know, vehicles, it's a traumatic, oh, yeah. very yeah. traumatic, Was because traumatic. the things they see yeah. You know, you wonder how these people keep going, you know, yeah. how do they manage to put it behind them so that they don't mm -hmm. think about it all the time. Yeah. What makes, what drives somebody in in medicine to keep seeing what they see, what they deal yeah. with, you know, yeah. I mean, it's got to take a special person. Mm -hmm. You have to have that innate aptitude for it and love and care for, for people. And over the years, actually, you know, they've they've uh, realized that you know people get PTSD yes. from stuff that they've seen on the job and some of them can't continue to do the job um, unless they have therapy and and thank goodness that they've recognized that you know that's really important you know to keep your staff because otherwise you know they're just good you know it makes a wreck of their own lives if they're if it's not treated well, I mean, it's understandable. Like, how many times can you go out as a paramedic, as an RCMP, mm -hmm. as a fireman, as a doctor, as a nurse, yeah. to see, you know, people in in terrible situations, yeah. um, and not have it affect you? Yeah, I would think just once it and, would be enough. And then when you see, you know, people, and you think, oh, you send them out to uh, 
you know, well, usually to Calgary, uh, and you think, oh, that person isn't even going to survive. He's not even. Gonna. And then what is so gratifying is to see them come in and walk into the hospital, and and they're all healed, or or you know, partially healed, and they've got a lot of you know, a lot of rehab to, to go, but they still, that is so gratifying when you see that. Oh, it must yeah. be. And that's one of the big changes that, you know, in the 70s we didn't have. No. Um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the plane, or the helicopter. Stars. Stars, all of a sudden I got a little yeah, yeah. bit of a blank. We, we didn't have that. Yeah. And now we do, you know, you can yeah. get uh, attention. And now we have air ambulance too, mm -hmm. so that's you know different ways. And now they've the, these incorporated this angel flight, which yeah. uh, people that can't afford to to go um, and have treatment, you know, because most of the, most of the stuff is, is shipped to Kelowna now instead mm -hmm. of to Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. So uh, now they've created the angel flight for people that you know have no way of getting over there, but they do need treatment. So. And, and that's volunteer. And, uh, it's volunteer too. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and so there's fundraising for that, and mm -hmm. you know, any group that wants to, don't know where to give their money to, please give to the Angel Fight because I think it's a really. Do you know who started that? Yeah, he he worked on the ambulance actually. Ian Bits Bitson, I think is his name. Yeah. Oh. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, he, he was, he was a paramedic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Him and his wife were, worked as paramedics when I was still working and. I don't Does he fly still... the plane then, or the helicopter? I don't know. I think so. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think he does. But uh, how amazing is that? Yeah, I know. Right to yeah. to have yeah. somebody because I've never this. heard of um, anything like that. No. When uh, when they decided and that was a couple of years ago, I guess. Now that they decided to do that. Yeah. Uh, truly amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a amazing assistance now for mm -hmm. if you're ill. Yeah. If something's happening, which we didn't have, no, you know, no. in the seventies no. or, or no, earlier, no, never even thought that was even possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that would be gratifying. Mm -hmm. Seeing somebody that you think won't make it suddenly be up and around. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's been a lot of changes, and for for the better, mm -hmm. I think. You know. But I've always been positive, you know. I always think change is usually good. I suppose not, it's not always, but you know. Well, change is inevitable, right? Yeah. In one way it or is another, it's the that. only constant yeah. in life. But I prefer that it's positive change yeah. and not negative change. Yeah. <laughs> and all of these things are certainly mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. and within the you know the health field and all different things. Mm -hmm. And I feel we have a community that will fight for that, like you said, with the coalition there. Oh, yeah. No, we do have that, so. Well, even the group, which is no longer, uh, that you were part of, that was raising money. Hospital Foundation. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is now being taken over by well, the it's, Community we Foundation. We still have uh, uh, a section. It's over um, in Cranberry at the regional hospital. but. We have a, a pot for the Elk Valley. Any money that's raised from the Elk Valley goes into to the Elk Valley. It comes back to the Elk Valley, mm -hmm. and they all actually can give us donations too. You know, but it our group has disbanded, so now it is it is over. But for a long time, because you because there's paid people to do the mm -hmm. the bookwork, and it's mostly the bookwork's the hard part to do, lot. right? You know, but before that, it was all volunteers, and you all, all uh, yeah. raised a lot of money. Yeah, and that was a lot of work. Yeah. all those yeah. fundraisers. And there's, you and there's still out. equipment that's being used in our hospital that was funded by the the foundation. So, and then we've got our tag on it, and mm -hmm. like that. But you know, like I say, you know, I don't work anymore, so I don't know if that uh, equipment is still being used because. It gets outdated like everything else. So, well, everything you know. uh, seems to, there's new things happening all the exactly. time. You know, yeah. just, yeah. it's so fast. Yeah. You know, the technology that mm -hmm. is, it's just so wonderful. And it's so great that even though, um, like, we have the MRI now in Cranbrook, so yeah. you don't have yeah. to go to Calgary or go to Kelowna or Vancouver yeah. for that. There's way more. Closer to home, mm -hmm. yeah. which is great. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, change is good. Yeah. And, you know, it's great that people like you and Don moved here in the 70s mm -hmm. and stayed. And stayed. <laughs> and you haven't moved because yeah. a lot of people have moved. Yeah. But uh, you're still here and we appreciate it. Thank you. And I hope you'll stay. Oh, I don't think we're going anywhere. We just think we, we need to downsize, you know, because we live on the acreage. And <laughs> it gets to be a lot of work after a while, you know, because we have to cut all the grass and blow the snow and... You know, as long as we physically can do it. Well, hey, listen, as long, as long as you keep doing all that you're doing, it sounds like <laughs> you're in pretty darn good shape. Yeah. You know, we don't intend on moving. Well, it's good, because it's good to have your base people, because quite a few people have moved from Fermi. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure some of it has to do with the fact uh, that, uh, you know, cost of housing, and if you're able to... Mm -hmm. Sell your house, just move to Cranbrook or Lethbridge and buy a house and still put money in the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. I can see why people do it. Uh, in the last month, I was asked by two realtors if I was interested in getting my house assessed, and I said, no, I'm not going anywhere, so it doesn't matter how much my house is worth. Yeah. Not moving. No. So, and then you go to buy something else. That's that's mm -hmm. our problem. We think, oh, okay, we sell this. Where are you going to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we want to stand for it. So. And, you know, uh, it's harder, I think, making friends when you're older. Whether as you here, you have your friends, you have, you know, your mm -hmm. strong set of friends that you yeah. do all these things with. How easy do you think it would be to move to the Okanagan and find the same? Have to be in the same town as the kids, <laughs> which would be Kamloops. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's hard, I think. Oh, uh, it is. Sure, it is. Yeah. Old, older people don't seem to. I mean, when you're young, you you have children in school, and and you meet all the parents, and mm -hmm. you do things with the children. So from one thing, you go to the other. I think as you're older, even if you join and go uh, play um, golf. Mm -hmm. might not be as easy to infiltrate a group. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, like I have the same people that I golf with all mm -hmm. the time, you know, we're buddies. And, yeah, you've and got some great friends. Together, we have some, yeah. yeah. And we ski together, yeah. Yeah, it'd be hard to lose that. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you oh. uh, coming and talking about life in Fernie. Well, this Unless you have missed telling me anything. Oh. <laughs> can't think of anything. <laughs> I didn't know what we were really going to be talking about. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I've been here for a few years. Mm -hmm. It's nice to kind of reminisce, mm -hmm. you know, as to what was here and what is here now. Well, it's certainly, I think, better. We have more. We have, in a way, better services, although, you know, maybe a few years ago we did have a few more service uh, offices here, but nowadays with computers you really don't need those brick and mortar offices because no. everything's online. Yeah. So Fernie's changed yeah. and some people say for the better and maybe some maybe not, but yeah. I, I th I'm happy with Fernie. I hope you are too. Oh yes. Well, Pat, thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate you coming thank and you. talking about Franny. Great. And thank you for joining us.